we are working our way through the Beatitudes, and each week we are reading and rereading and reading and rereading them so that they become a part of who we are. And uh, let's find the find them on the green sheet. Matthew 5, 1 through 12. Daisy read them for us in one version. We're going to read them in a different version this time. Let's read it together. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. By the time we're done with this, you will have that memorized. It will become second nature to you. It's, it's a gift that you get to carry with you on, on into the rest of your life. So that's one of the reasons why we are doing this over and over again. Jesus is introducing his disciples to his mission and to his message. And notice that the, the first and the last of the Beatitudes, the second line on the first and last of the Beatitudes is uh, identical. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This whole poem is about the kingdom of heaven. It refers to the kingdom of heaven. The, 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 this kind of the, the effect of having these last two lines uh, talk about the kingdom of heaven creates kind of a sandwich effect. Think of this poem as a sandwich. Uh, all of the other parts, which are all, they're all interrelated, all of them are a part of the sandwich about the kingdom of heaven. And so, again, each of these lines is related to the others. They are not eight separate blessings, but they are one blessing that's expressed in eight different ways. So this morning, we're going to focus on verse 4, which is the second beatitude that Jesus shared with his followers during his uh, uh, first discipleship orientation class. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And by the way... By the way, those who are working on building an English vocabulary, mourn is the English power word this week. To mourn is the English power word. To mourn is to be very sad because somebody has died for you, or somebody has died in, in your life that you know, or you have lost something that's important to you, and, and it hurts you inside. That's what, that's what mourning is. And in our passage, Jesus says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And I, I've been playing with this verse for a couple of weeks, trying to get a handle on the message of it. And I, it's, it's a little bit of a challenging message. Blessed are those who mourn. I mean, think about it. Blessed are those who experience pain, who experience loss. I mean, you know all about this. Perhaps you've recently experienced the loss of somebody important to you. Or maybe it is something that is important to you that has been lost. Uh, and as I, as I uh, age, I find that I grieve. My grief is inescapable. There, there's loss of family. There's loss of friends. There's loss of mental or bodily function. Maybe you're, you're mourning the loss of a dream that you had for your life because you're getting older and, you're, and now you're, you realize, you know, this ain't going to happen. I, I, I'm, 
I, I'm probably not going to become a world-renowned author impressing the masses with my wisdom, stirring the global church and mi to mission and faithfulness. And no matter how many hours I practice, I am not going to play the ukulele at the level of Jake Shimabukuro or James Hill. Uh, I, you know, I like to say I started out too late in life, but maybe it's something else as well. Uh, that part of the ukulele dream is dead. The, the, there, there's much to mourn in our lives. E even when you are young, you feel the losses. Maybe when you're young, you feel the losses even more intensely. Uh, there's loss of love, loss of family, loss of status in your class, loss of grades. <laughs> and, 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 and it's the people such as ourselves, mourners, the, the grief struck, that Jesus holds out this blessing and says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. But, but when you're truly mourning, it's hard to recognize anything that resembles a blessing, right? I mean, the pain gets in the way of, of receiving the blessing. And yet here is Jesus playing up the blessing and, and extending it to the mourning. So as I've been working again, uh, trying to wrap my head and my heart around this beatitude, I've worked up a couple of kind of phrases, uh, kind of rough drafts for the authorized points to paraphrase, uh, but neither of which fully captures the drama of the message, yet I think I'm on the right track. Guys, guys, if you're going to talk, you've got to be really soft so you're not competing with me. you got to whisper. you got to whisper. And, and, and the first... Um, dimension of the word often is rendered as, which is plus, is, is uh, happy. So uh, I, I, my first draft is, happy are those who are unhappy, for they will experience happiness. <laughs> happy are those who are unhappy, for they will experience happiness. I mean, talk about paradox and piety. It, it almost feels a little bit on the trite side, though. Don't worry, be happy. Or because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof because I'm happy. You know it? You know the song? Yes. Clap along if you feel the happiness is the truth because I'm happy. Clap along if you know what happiness is to you because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like that's what you want to do. The happy song. So, it feels kind of trite. So perhaps I'll stick with the word blessed. And here's my second draft attempt. Blessed are the brokenhearted, for in the realm of the kingdom of heaven, they will experience healing in their hearts. Blessed are the brokenhearted, for in the realm of the kingdom of heaven, they will experience healing in their hearts. So far, that's the one that feels the most right. It's not that Jesus is making light of the pain and the mourning that we all experience, but he is asserting that in his coming kingdom, even that is going to get transformed. And I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But I'd like to lay out for your consideration three observations about how this beatitude expresses the wonder of Jesus' kingdom and how that impacts our lives, even here and even now. Number one, mourning is normal in our broken world. Mourning is normal in our broken world. It is not weird to grieve. It, 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 it's not something that you want to, if you're experiencing the pain of loss, it's not something that you want to stuff deep inside of yourself and hide. Grief is not shameful. It's not immature to grieve. It's not a weakness to be in mourning. Jesus wept, says John 11.35. Jesus had just learned that his friend Lazarus had died, and, and even though he was preparing to raise Lazarus from the dead, Jesus still wept over the pain of his death. 
The, the, the point is that in our broken world, death and associated maladies are normal. Grief is normal. And unfortunately, mourning is normal. Loss and pain is a part of living fully in this broken realm. But along comes Jesus, and, and he's introducing a new realm, a, a new kingdom, a new era, where death is not the final word. So this is number two. The kingdom of heaven ushers in a blessed reversal of even the pain of loss. The kingdom of heaven ushers in a blessed reversal of even the pain of loss. That is, in Jesus' startup kingdom, he is pulling the rug out from underneath death. Everywhere he goes, everywhere he is, everything that he does, he is tripping death and he's eliminating the causes for grief. And if he keeps up with what he is doing, eventually death will permanent, be permanently defeated and comfort will overcome the mourning. The, the causes for grief will be eliminated and replaced with causes for joy, confidence, and hope. And, and that's the message to his disciples here in Matthew 5, uh, verse 4. Jesus is preparing his close followers with this idea that his task is to reverse the pain. His job is to reverse the brokenness. His calling is to reverse the decay of the morning. His mission is the work to make the world great again. But his reversal doesn't involve any kind of political gamesmanship or shenanigans. He, he's going to track or attack the root causes. He is going to reverse death itself. Now, the reversal is not yet complete, although the great hurdle was overcome at the cross and through the resurrection, where Jesus' Jesus's kingdom was permanently fixed into the history, where death was dealt a terminal blow, although the fighter is still up on his feet, staggering around and, and lashing about wherever he can, but he is without hope of recovery. So even now, the, the wounded devil flailing about, with, with him flailing about, we, we align ourselves with Jesus and his kingdom of heaven. And we do so, as we do so, we realize that our lives are no longer defined by our grief. Number three. In Jesus' new realm, our lives are defined by the comfort we receive from him rather than the grief we've endured. In Jesus' new realm, that is the kingdom he talks about, our lives are defined by the comfort we receive rather than the grief we've endured. Yes, there is still pain and loss out there. People still die. Sin is still something to guard against. Betrayal is still a reality. We don't deny any of that. We acknowledge it. But when we're connected to Jesus, the impact of the loss is minimized because we're defining our lives by the hope of the resurrection. We anticipate that on the last day we will all be raised from the dead to rule with Jesus over the renewed creation, the new heaven, the new earth, the fully realized kingdom of heaven. And, and, and we are comforted, blessed, when we define our current lives according to the kingdom of heaven. That, that, that's the point that Jesus is making here. And here is the key point. We are blessed with comfort when we define our lives in relation to Jesus and the kingdom of heaven. We are blessed with comfort when we define our lives in relation to Jesus and his kingdom of heaven. So blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And that is absolutely, that is the good news. So the kids have put together some masterpieces over here. <laughs> <coughs> and we've lost them. Well, we still have a couple who still have explain. a couple to explain. Okay, so I need to see. Well, I'm going to pull this one off. This is the one of the things that make people sad. What's that? Ghost music. Ghost music.
Okay, so there's nobody to explain it. But some of it is like death and um, the clouds, just gloominess. This one is rest in peace, dog. Right, Monica, guys, I need your help. Explain. I need you to explain what's on this one. Who drew things that make you sad? What did you put on here? What is it? A broken heart? And what, what does it say by it? It says, someone feeling empty and sad. So, makes me sad. Okay, yeah. When other people feel it as well as yourself? In the gray area. Uh-huh. That's the sad part. Which is their sadness, uh, being lost, feeling lonely, and confused. Okay. And then rest of, when you lost, lose a dog, that kind of makes you sad. Did you put that on there? Have you lost a dog? Oh, his, yeah, yeah. And then ocean pollution. Okay, so then I want to know why a bunny rabbit makes you sad. Yeah, it has tails. Did a rabbit die? <laughs> No, it's a Pikachu. It's a Pikachu. <laughs> it's a Pikachu. <laughs> so other things on here. So there are all of these things that, that make us sad. And you put up some things that make us happy, right? That these represent the new kind of things that, that God is doing in our life. I want to pull his friends off there so I can... And then take the next one. This one is a lot more colorful, by the way. <laughs> I think it has a lot more activity. We received a lot more activity. Broken wrist makes me sad. Okay, so what's on this one? What, who, somebody explain that to me down there. Hold it up. Anyone? The sun. The sun? Yeah, sure. Somebody wrote something. Yeah, what's it say on it? It says, the only happiness to come is the pursuit of happiness. Okay. And I drew the sun because it represents how I felt when I become happy, which is full of passion. I felt love. There's a lot of love around, there's faith, and there's also trust. Okay, and then this one is apples on a tree, and there's a garden. You know, that's kind of a, the, the renewed place. To, and what's in here? Tell me about this, anybody? That Cheyenne. What is that? What's this about? Flowers, it looks like. And animals, there are lots of animals. And happy people. And of course, my bicycle. Yeah. Presents and bicycles. There's some cool stuff on there. The fun thing. So the point is that when when Jesus address, when Jesus blesses us, he he takes care. He is going to destroy the things that more that cause us to be sad. That cause us to mourn. Sorry for all your art. But it's all going to be destroyed. All the sadness is destroyed. It's gone. And it will be replaced with the blessing of God. So that's, that's the story. So you can go back to your seats now, please, quietly. You asked that one the other day that you weren't back. If Jesus was not on the cross, would he still be with us today? And I, I think the answer to that is no. Because he was a fully human person, he would have died like a regular person would have died. That would be my guess. But because he, but he rose from the dead, he, he, is, he started the new life that we're all going to experience. And that's, that's really kind of the whole good news of it.